some very interesting information has come forward about what happens with deregistered companies. This is in re a relation to Wollumbin Horizons and the claimed creditors that have been um, created. <laughs> that's, that's a nice term for it, isn't it? Uh, two of them that have been deregistered. Rainmaker Eco Investments, who was Freedom Summits. Uh, yes, that's the, the company involved with Mark Darwin, Adrian Brennock, Philip Dixon, Freedom Summits 2014 and all the other things. So, yes, they are Freedom Summits and also a listed creditor. Also the ones that were lending and borrowing money to each other, Rainmaker Eco Investments. That was on the loan contract I showed in previous videos. So this one was deregistered in March 2018. And this one here, Boundary Property Toowoomba, was deregistered well, within days of Adrian Brannock's final bankruptcy hearing. Now, Boundary Property Toowoomba, I've already uploaded the search information about that. It is uh, his family. And the interesting thing is that uh, he, his, his family were in charge of the business. Then at some stage, Adrian Brannock's wife, Christy, was made sole director and shareholder of the company. I thought that was a rather interesting move. Now I'm bringing this up because uh, the liquidator now has funds to pay out creditors. And once he finishes dipping into it and making sure he gets paid every last cent that has been dragged out that he can milk it for, then there will be the distribution of creditors and the first layer is actually going to be these two boundary properties and uh, Rainmaker Eco investments. Now, I've tried to ascertain from the liquidator whether the creditors list I'm looking at is actually the same one he's looking at. It's a very simple question but the poor guy doesn't want to actually answer it because he's scared I was recording his phone conversation and if I brought that up in court and he said no they're not because he could he could have just turned around and fobbed me off and said they're not even on the list anymore as if to end a subject but you see he's already received enough emails he knows that this isn't going away and he can't say you know to fob me off because I'm going to hold it against him. And damn straight, I'm going to hold it against him. So, after playing around, you know, couldn't answer a simple question. I've got a creditor's list. You've got a creditor's list. Are these two on your creditor's list? Well, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> oh, he's a dear little boy, isn't he? You know when people have got something to hide the way they behave and treat you. And I made several phone calls today and that was by far the most dodgiest phone call I had. I did speak to Jerry Prusbutwilwit, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Jerry, sorry. Lovely man. He's had nothing to do with these people at Nightcap on Minjimbu or Bulla Bulla for five years. The story goes that he was a mentor to a law student. He knows Adrian Brannock, Mark Darwin and Mark McMurtry, but he has nothing to do with them or OSTF. And uh, the only, he was actually offered a share in Bulla Bulla. He turned it down. They asked him to speak at the Freedom Summits, which he did. And that's pretty much the last dealings he's had with him. So, I mean, I spoke to Jerry. He was very easy to talk to. There was no hesitations in his voice. It was a, an honest conversation 
that I was receiving. A little bit different to what I got out of the liquidator. Stephen starts. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now the only thing that uh, poor Stephen felt safe to tell me is I said, all right, fine. As a generic question, just tell me, um, what would you do with a deregistered company? How do you pay a deregistered company? And that he did tell me. First option. One, the law says that if the company is deregistered, the money gets paid to ATSIC. Then there's the second option, that the company is re-registered so that they can actually pay it. Now, considering all the circumstances that have gone on around this, and the fact that he, he would not even deny that they were on the creditors list, because it would have been easy for him to say, look, it's not even there. He couldn't confirm it because that would give me more to work with. He can't deny it because I'm recording you, mate, and if you said that, well, you're up shit's creek without a paddle, especially if you pay them. <laughs> So the guy couldn't say boo, except I don't want to talk to you. Well, that was a big mistake, Steve, because you know what? You should have handled me a lot better than that. You, you might have been able to talk me around a little bit, but nah. You haven't got the smarts for that, have you? See, so yes, I'm bringing up these two particular deregistered companies. I'm just going to ask for anyone that's interested to um, use the links that I'll leave in the description to just go and check regularly to see if these two deregistered businesses have actually re-registered so they can receive payment from the, um, the liquidator for their supposed money owed from Wollumbin Horizons. I'm not going to make this a long one today because I've got other things to be getting on to. There's something that I thought about that happened about a month ago. And uh, poor girl, she didn't have a clue that I was sus on it and that I fed her information to actually see whether it would get back to Mark McMurtry. Because I know Mark McMurtry out of all of them. You know, he's really, really good at letting that ego get the better of him and he's just got to post something and comment something. That is until the 4th of December when they posted that, that he's gone into hiding because, <laughs> yep, his solicitors and everybody has said, will you shut the hell up? Every time you post something, you're giving them some more information. So will you just stop posting, stop commenting, just shut up. <laughs> so, and that is probably advice he should have taken before the information that he was given by this person that um, played secret squirrel with me confirmed exactly what she was up to. See, I was a little bit suspicious on her in the first place, so um, I'm going to be very guarded and I will play a little bit with you. I want to test your integrity, especially if I'm going to be on alert before I even speak to you on the phone. you got to wonder that they were ringing me, trying to set me up, and they just got fed what I wanted them to hear. Now, of course, there was no guarantees at that stage that my instinct and my intuition and all those warning signals would actually prove to be true. But they did prove to be true. As I said, Mark McMurtry blabbed it out. And it's like, yep, got you and got her. And who is her? Morgan Brown. Now, I did think carefully before revealing this information because um, I don't like revealing anybody that has communicated with me. It is a trust. 
But the thing is, this woman didn't even approach me on trust. She approached me with duplicity. And, well, frankly, I gave her duplicity too. <laughs> hey, I've been... You've got to get up early to play me. You know, sorry, but I've got natural instincts that even if you're talking away to me and it's like I'm getting sucked in, my body's telling me, hang on, you know, I, I end up with physical symptoms. So, yeah, I end up having to listen. And uh, the reason being that I'm actually sharing Morgan's Brown, Morgan Brown's name now is that there are too many people out there that want to think that the OSTF and Mark McMurtry are so nice and honourable and good when they send little girls off to try and find out, oh, can you tell me what you've got on Mark McMurtry? Um, well, we've got nothing. That's what I told her. And that's what she believed. <laughs> what a pity. See, she dangled a carrot in front of my nose. And I kind of figured that, um, yeah, it was bait. But you know what? When you go fishing yourself, well, you actually control the situation. She had no clue that I was onto her. She thought she was so bloody brilliant, you know, with all her secret squirrel stuff. If you are a good, honest person, I will... I am the best friend, the most loyal and trusting, and I would die for you. But you want to play games? You want to try and set me up? Guess what? As I said, you're going to have to get up early to do that one. And so I'm putting it out there to the rest of the community, what Morgan Brown tried to do to me. Just so that you may know that if this Morgan Brown tries something on with you, that she's not been honest either. So that's the heads up for the honest people. And sorry, Morgan, if that is your real name, no, I'm not sorry. You shouldn't have tried what you tried in the first place. So you get what you get now. I do not protect liars, cheats and thieves. It's as simple as that. So if anyone else wants to try and play the same game, I'll do exactly the same thing to you. Make no mistake, I will not cover up for people that are doing the wrong thing. And I can't be bought and sold. I can't be scared off. And maybe people, before they try, another one on me. Because, I mean, seriously, please, can you get the hint I am not going to call to the other person in my private messages because I'm getting the same thing about you that I have about Morgan. And I don't want to play. I just don't want to play. I played with Morgan to see if it was an attempt by Mark McMurtry. And the information that was given to her was unique in the sense that, all right, so if she passes it on, I'll be able to identify it. And sure enough, she did. And I was able to. And I've sat on this for a couple of weeks wondering whether I'm going to say anything or not. But in my silence, I feel like I'm betraying every honest person out there. So, rightly or wrongly, I'm telling you that this woman tried playing a game with me and I just played one back. <laughs> so I hope the recording that they got is worth it for them. <laughs> Uh, they won't get another one. Ah, oh, well, yes they will. They can listen to this one. <laughs> and all the others. <laughs> Along with, yes, Adrian Brannock is a bankrupt. Yes, he's... Oh, that's another interesting thing too. His trustee actually says he's 
he's got a job as a marketing guy for for um, Nightcap. <laughs> yeah, mate. Pity it's not out there in the public domain, plastered everywhere, that he's a developer. The developer and the marketing, marketing guy, you know. I mean, you want marketing, you've got Max Egan, you Pete Evans, the Tolmans, you've got all these others for marketing. And you've got the real estate agents. You, know, you don't need the developer to be doing the marketing and promoting. Although he is because he likes to put his face out there and big note himself, just like Mark McMurtry does. Well, Mark McMurtry has obviously, you know, if I was the only problem out there, he wouldn't have ran away from online and commenting his nasty little troll comments like he normally does, calling everybody names. I mean, the guy gets a fix out of being nasty to people. So imagine how badly he's suffering now that he can't get on and tell all these people how wrong they are and how stupid they are and how he's right and... Yeah, I'm not even going to start to go down the way he's going to say it. So, yeah, think twice before playing any more games with me, eh? Any of you at Nightcap, I'm mingeable. I'm not easily played. And I don't play fair back. Guess what? I didn't play fair when she rang me. But then again wasn't fair to try and set me up either, was it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've got to gloat a little bit here, you know. It was, it was one of those validation things where, you know what, I love it when I listen to my instinct because it usually, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to turn around and prove me right. So thank you, instinct. And... Thank you, too, to anybody that will keep an eye on these two companies. See if uh, Adrian Brennock and uh, Philip Dixon are going to try and activate these deregistered companies again. Uh, well, Christy Brennock would ha actually be doing that, which is quite handy because maybe that's why she was in Boundary Properties in the first place. I don't know. Let's just say that if Boundary Properties Toowoomba was owed money because of, well, she supposedly lent her husband money, it's like, yeah, sure, I'm going to buy that one. It's just like he said that he paid $500,000 towards the, the value of buying 3222. He didn't pay a single cent. Not a cent. But it is interesting that um, he has got 50000 that he's claiming back from Wollumbin Horizons. And that came from the bankruptcy trustee. He's expecting that if there is not enough funds to pay out all the other creditors, Mr. Brannock will miss out. But if there's enough left over, he'll get his 50000 that will go to his trustee to go to pay creditors. That's a far cry from 500000 that Mark McMurtry claimed he paid on several different occasions. And being co-developer, you know, you'd think you'd know a little bit more accurately. Ah, oh, but what the hell, you know, let's just add a zero on. <laughs> because he was such a big hero for paying 500000 of the $1.1 million price. He didn't pay a single cent. Investors paid for the Mount Burrell Commercial and the Nightcap community. It's as simple as that. All he did was con people into handing over their money so he could go do it and stick it in his name. Then when people started to complain, 
down goes the company into liquidation. Then you get in this liquidator. And mind you, even the court says that uh, all of these actions in the court, any time you are taking the liquidator to court, you are chewing away at the money that can come back to you. And the judge said, <laughs> the only one that is insured to get paid is always the liquidator. Isn't that interesting? Even a judge said that all too often, the only ones that end up getting paid are the liquidators. So it's actually a business to make sure that nobody else gets anything out of it. They don't care whether they get anything or not, because for whatever they do, they will always get paid first. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. I said that before. <laughs> I'll catch you next time.